you know, I believe is a very crucial uh, time in the seasons that we are living in. I uh, you know I believe that, uh, you know, as the, the, the world becomes darker and the world becomes brighter and full of opportunity, one of the things that I feel that is very important for us to take note, and this is something that I want to share, a principle that will help us succeed, whether in good time or bad time, is to learn how to count our blessings. Turn to your neighbor and look at them eyeball to eyeball. Maybe you, you, can, you can smile under your mask and look at them and say, no, you need to learn to count your blessings. See, I have a privilege or I have a practice in my life where I actually learn how to come. I mean, I, I actually evaluate my life in every se- different seasons of my life. You know, I think that one of the practices that I do is that in any, at the end of every year, I will spend some time reflecting, you know, and also... At the end of every day, I, I actually I spend my, ta- my time reflecting what the day has beca- uh, been, you know, whether they have been a day of great misses or been a day of great hits, you know. In, but the one thing I found out is true is that when I evaluate the misses and the hits in a day or even in a month or even in a week or, and over the, even a year, one of the things that I will find out that at the end of the day, I will find out that God's hand in every situation, even in my losses, even in my winning, you know, one of the things that I cannot stop but come to this ultimate response that to give thanks to God for everything that He's given to me. You know, there was a blind man, a blind boy that was sitting down on the stairs of a building. Maybe some of you have heard this story in different ways, but there was a blind boy that was sitting with his head and he was basically begging for uh, money for people who pass by will drop them some coins. And, you know, he was sitting down at this particular government uh, building, sitting down with his, with his head and with a sign on himself. And the sign was simply this. His, the sign says, I am blind. I'm a, please help. So he put this sign right in front of him and there was a head and people passed by. And what happened was throughout the whole, the whole time, very little people actually gave to this boy. You know, this boy really needed the money, but because, you know, uh, you know, there was no connection with the message that was on the sign, people just passed him by, just like anything else. So sooner or later, a man came by and saw this boy that was sitting on the stairs of this governmental, uh, government uh, office and took his sign and wrote something on it. He wrote something on it. And then after that, he put this sign back on the boy's hand and walked away. Interestingly, that whole, uh, whole period throughout until the evening or the afternoon of that particular day, people pass by, start putting more coins. And he, he could recognize, you know, the thing is this, he's blind, but he's not deaf. So he could hear coins, he could hear people passing by and dropping things into the head. And it was not the norm, norm because the norm is that people would just drop a few coins here and there, but it was like, wow, suddenly with the change or or what that man did caused him to be prosperous and, you know, blessings upon his life. Sooner, sooner or later, that afternoon, that same man, you know, he could hear the same footstep, you know, when people don't have certain senses in their life, they tend to be sensitive, you know, and they, he realized that this is the same footstep that the man that came and sit beside him and wrote new things on his sign, and he was trying to grab, and finally he grabbed the guy and he asked the guy, you know, what do you do to my sign? Because after you took my sign, something happened. Everybody started giving to me. Before that, nobody wants to give to me. So he said this, you know, the truth is this, you know, uh, the difference between your sign and my sign, you know, is, is, is this way. You know, the truth is, both of us wrote the truth. You are blind and you really need help. But what happened is this, I rewrote it differently. See, I wrote, today... It's a beautiful day and I cannot see. Instead of talking about the issue that the boy had, you know, he, he was talking about the, the issue that, or the privilege that everybody had and that's the ability to see. The dif- different thing about this sign is that both are truth, but one simply talks about the blindness that the boy, the boy had. The second convey that everyone walking by had to be grateful because they could see. See, the truth is this, every day of our life, that blessings are something that we receive from God. Every day is blessing, is something that we receive from God. We can either be like the blind man who's, who always need, or blind boy that always need, or, or conveying her, his need to people, or we can change the whole thing and express it in a way that we have privileges that we need to count our blessing with. Maybe sometimes, you know, we take things for granted. For example, we take for granted our heartbeat until the day it stops. We take for granted our lungs that exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide, right? You know, we, we take for granted our brains that processes all sorts of input in our life until the day we realize that our mental health is not up to, up to air. 
we take advantage of our liver. I hope Chinese New Year, you know, you go slow on your liver. You know, and the thing is this, we take advantage of our liver who cleanses the impurity from our food, the food that we eat or things that we drink. You know, at the end of the day, we take for granted all these things that are working daily into our life because why we never stop to reflect and count our blessings. Maybe we should be like this girl. In a class, we know a class that was in, in America, there was a setting of, of, of students in this particular school and they were asked this simple question, what is the seven wonders of the world? As they were all sitting in groups, you know, they all submit their, their, the names of, of what they think were the seven wonders of the world. So they came up with this, you can agree to disagree and then everybody started voting, this is the seven wonders of the world. So they came up with this particular list. He says the first wonder of the world is the Great Pyramid in Egypt. The second was the Taj Mahal. Third was the Grand Canyon, Americans, right? So, you know, and you know, the Panama Canal, and of course, one of, their, one of the things that was in the list of the seven wonders of the world for them was the Empire State Building. So I don't know why. Okay, St. Peter, Be, uh, Basil Basilicus, and then there's number seven, the Great Wall of China. But as the teacher was giving this list, uh, putting this list on the wall and asking everybody to vote which one is the wonders of the world, this is true, this is true, you can agree to disagree, she realized there was a little girl in the class that has not submitted her seven wonders of the world. So as she goes, uh, go, I mean, she, she voiced it out, she says, girl, do you need, you need help? Do you need assistance? Is it uh, difficult for you to choose the seven wonders of the world? And she said, yeah, it, you know, it's really very difficult because, you know, there were a lot of things in her mind. So the teacher said to her, why don't you just voice out the seven wonders and, you know, maybe we can help you out, sort your mind and maybe come to a conclusion what the seven wonders would be. So the, the girl hesitated, hesitated, but eventually she came up and she voiced out these seven wonders that she thinks is the seven wonders of the world. She started by saying this, to see, to taste, to touch, to hear. She hesitated a little bit more and she says, to feel, to laugh, and to love. The seven wonders of the world from a child. You know, I want you to know, at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, we, this, this particular story brings a lot of things to my heart because I realized that she really got the seven wonders of the world really well. Because why? It concludes that the seven wonders of the world doesn't come from the, doesn't come from the hands of men, but rather comes from the hand of God. To, to have all these things that the girl was describing has the seven wonders of the world can only be given by God to you and I. So I want to share with you today, you know, as we go into Chinese New Year, maybe you missed the New Year this year, no? you still haven't started your engine, no? you wait until Chinese New Year to start another New Year. You know, maybe it's time for you to evaluate, evaluate how your life has been. You know, hey, you know how, evaluate your misses and your opportunities. You know, and I want you to know that at the end of the day, may you come to this simple conclusion that you count your blessing at the end of it. So I want to share with you from uh, a story in the Bible that will give us the principle why giving thanks to God or counting our blessing will pay and give us the blessing that God so want to give to all of us. Okay, if you have your Bible, please turn to Luke chapter 17 and verse 11 to verse 19. Many of us are very familiar with this story. It's the story of 10 lepers that was healed by Jesus. But nevertheless, from this story, I want to share with you three principles or three things of why counting your blessings will bring you to greater blessings. Okay, now, verse 11, and the Bible says, Now, his way to Jerusalem, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Borderline, no? Samaria and Galilee. Verse 12, and he says, He was going into a village, Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. Verse 13, call out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Verse 14, when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. In verse 15, one of them, when he saw, he saw what he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17, Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other? Nine. Verse 18, has not one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Verse 19, then he said, rise and go, your faith has made you well. This is the word of God. I want to share with you today that in this story, there are three principles that will change your life if you get it, if you do it, if you practice this. 
Because no matter how your year has been, no matter how the start of 2022 has been, if you practice this, let me tell you this, you will have a good outcome at the end of 2022. You see, just to give you a story behind this story, you see, being a leper in the time of Jesus was a very difficult thing. It was a very difficult thing. It was as good as someone that, that just received a death sentence. Uh, two things that will happen. Number one, you will, you will suffer physically. Sooner or later, you will drop your fingers, you drop your nose, you drop whatever parts of your body that is infected because why? It will totally disfigure your physical body to the point where nobody can recognize that you will want the person like this. Second thing is this, not only that you are disfigured permanently, but you are, you are cut away permanently. As long as you have that condition, you are cut away permanently from the society, from people that you love, from people that you care, the people that you want to hang out with, the people that you want to have reunion dinner with. You know, if those, there's no Zoom. Huh? Okay, but the thing is this, you know, people that you want to have coffee, share your life with, you can't because why? The moment you have leprosy, you'll be taken away out of society and you are cut away. You are an outcast. Interestingly, they got a healing. Ten of them, healing. All got healed by Jesus, not by uh, no, laying of hands, but a spoken word by Jesus. There are a couple of things that Jesus did. Of course, number one, he spoke the word and he gave an instruction to follow. And every one of them followed and every one of them got healed. But what's interesting in the story, one of them returned while everybody went away. Interesting, why one? I also don't know. But you know, I believe he has to do with the message that I'm preaching today. Okay? That he learned how to count his blessing. I don't know about you, you know, but if you receive a, that kind of blessing, that kind of uh, goodness or miracle in your life, I think that there are a lot of things that you might sometimes do. You, know, you might want to go and hang out with the people that you miss all this year. right? The first thing in your mind was to do, to do the things that you always wanted to do because you can't because you have leprosy or to hang out with the first, uh, to, to, be, to be with the person that you want or to hug the person that you ever wanted all these years because you can't. But somehow, the Bible tells me this leper did something I mean, something that was out of the norm. It was something that was different. Not only that, let me give you a story about this guy. He was not outcast for a number of years, but he was also an outcast of the outcast. The Bible calls him a Samaritan. He was being a Samaritan, hanging out with a Jew was not a good thing because they don't acknowledge you to be of equal power with them. So he's not only a leper, but he's a leper, I mean, he's an outcast of an outcast. He was, you know, and but yet again, this man is going to teach us how to live a successful life. And that's by learning how to count our blessings. There are three things that the leper taught us. Number one, the Bible says this in verse 15. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. Turn to your neighbor and say, came back. So how many of us actually come back to the place where we, we receive our blessings? Most of us will move on, you know, get on with our life and continue and do what we pursue. But the Bible tells me this. This man learned a principle and that simple principle is this, that he remembered God in every season. He remembered God in every season. He remembered as he received the healing from God, he remembered God and he came back to give thanks. You see, he was set free from leprosy. He can do whatever he wants. He wants to play football. You know, for how many years he never kicked a ball before? Maybe if he was a leper, he kicks the ball, the leg come out. But nevertheless, now he can kick a ball knowing that his leg will still be there. You know, he can touch his loved one, hug the baby that he's longing for that was once a baby, but now maybe he has grown up to be a adult. And finally, he could hug this son or daughter of his. Maybe, you know, it's time to hang out and catch up all the missing years of what's been happening. Have coffee, not enough. Have many, many coffee. Have one day, not enough. Have many, many days. Hanging out together and just, you know, having yourself being, uh, being, being up to date up to whatever that has been happening in the country or in the family or in the businesses that they are involved. But this man did nothing like this. The Bible says the first thing that he did was he remembered God. He returned to God. Because the truth is this, ch chances are sometimes even when you go through the best blessings, we will forget God. Even when we do 
Don't talk about only the best things, but even the worst thing that we go through, we will forget God. Have you ever wondered? We always say, that, wow, you know, God bless me, then people, our people who are blessed always forget God. That's not true. I've seen how people who have been going through a tough time forget God in the middle of the whole crisis and circumstances. That's the reason why the psalmist says this in Psalm 103 verse 2. He says, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know why the, the psalmist says forget not? The truth is we all forget. We will all forget what God has done for us. How he saved us, how he provided for us, how he has journeyed with us throughout. That's the reason why we need to stop and reflect and evaluate. It's interesting, forget not, forget not. You know, forget not because we tend to forget. I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, it's a challenge to remember. Especially when things are going so fast in Singapore. Things going on, wow, one crisis after another crisis. One blessing after another blessing. The next thing we, we, we do is that we, we're just going, going and going. But it's important that we remember God. Every season. Whether you're in your mountain season, or maybe you're going through a valley, or maybe you're stuck in the valley, no matter where you've been, I want you to know, you need to learn to remember God. Forget not. Forget not. Forget not. I was sharing with Lily, and I said this, honestly, 2022 has not been the easiest year for me. You know, the start of the year has been an onslaught on my family. Onslaught. I found out something about my children. You know, she was, you know she, we went to the hospital, we found out something about and it shocked. You know, it was a spiritual attack on my eldest, my eldest uh, daughter. And it broke my heart. It was very trying. It was very difficult. But we know it was spiritual. Having demonic encounters, visiting her in the room, you know, having a form of me and came, coming up with imaginary images in her mind about uh, her father. It was heartbreaking. It was really heartbreaking. You know, of course, the doctors recommend going to psychiatric, going this and going that. She's a high flyer. She's a top student in the school. You know, but she was going through this journey. You know, and no one knows what was she going through. And until she went to the hospital this year, at the turn of this year, I mean, you know, she, because she's been having fainting spell, fainted in, 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 at home during the holiday, headache non-stop, 24 hours headache in pain. And found out there's this entity that has been visiting her with red eyes looking at her when she sleeps. And the worst thing is this, the person looked exactly like me. And she said this, she said this to the counsellor, she said this to my wife, I'm scared of daddy. I'm scared of daddy. We prayed over, when she came back home, I did a deliverance. You know, and of course, she, she's better now and she's recovered. You know, and, and I think it's also a long journey with me and her. You know, because the enemy creeps in and destroy, try to destroy this relationship. I'm very close to her. She's my paupe. And to know that my paupe is afraid of the daddy. It hurts. It hurts. Same time, I discovered that I have pains after youth camp in December. You know, a lot of this Zoom youth camp, something was hurting my body. I walked out of that place, you know, I walked out of my, my study room and I said, I need to go and see a doctor. Did x-rays, can't find anything. Went to, was referred to a bone specialist. And then they saw, maybe there's a bone that is out of a line, you know, in your, you may have a sleep disc, but we don't know what's going on in your body. So next month, I have two MRIs waiting for me. Two. Don't know what's happening. On slow on my body. Just a couple of weeks ago, my wife lost her savings because the shop that she was investing in or the, the place, that, the platform that she was investing, closed shop, ran away. We're talking about tens of thousands of dollars just before Chinese New Year. You know, boom, all gone. And to top that up, even my house got attacked. The bird started to live on my roof, start to die on my roof, and my house is now infested by bird mites. Every night, spraying. The last, yes, just yesterday night, you know, just spraying, killing. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? And my wife's body was uh, affected. Her whole body is full of 
sores that were because she was beaten. Even washing everything, things like that. We always wonder, what, what is happening? What is happening? Not the best 2022. But I still believe that God is true to His Word. I still believe that this is going to be an amazing year for my family. Because I forget not what He has done for me all these years. See, the reason why the psalmist wrote that is because we tend to forget. I say, I don't live by the circumstances that is before me. I live by the faith that is found in the Word of God. Charles Spurgeon put it in this way, we often write our blessing in the sense and we engrave our complaints in the marble. We put everywhere. Everybody say, oh, this is my, my complaint. Hey, why not the other way around? You write your complaints in the sense when the wind blows it away, when the water washed it away, it's gone. I mean, not saying that you can't complain, okay? But why don't you engrave on marble the truth that comes from the Word of God. Your blessings that you have received from God, you acknowledge it comes from Him. What made Paul a great apostle is that he was always quick to remember God. This was his confession. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, but, whoever, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out His special favour on me, not without results, for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. This is bragging, okay? Yet, it was not I, but God who was working through me by His grace. His acknowledgement. Yes, I work hard, but it's because of God's grace. I remember God. I am who I am because of who God is. Someone said this, life is good. But let me give you an extension of that. God is great. No matter what comes your way, remember, life can be good or bad, but God is always great. Point number two, I, that I've learned about counting my blessings from this leper. It's not only to remember God in every season, but to rejoice in every situation. The Bible says he came back, he praised God in a loud voice. Loud voice. You might not be able to you know, echo your singing, but you can echo your praises in a loud voice. Not, shout, not, not, not soft, huh? loud voice means shouting. Huh? At the top of his voice, hey, thank you. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus, thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Interesting, interesting. Why did the scripture have to mention that? Why? What's the difference between a Samaritan and a non-Samaritan or Jew? Why must you emphasize that scripture? Because, because, you know, it shows how grateful this man was. You see, there were people in the tent that might be, a, they might be Jews. They know how, all these principles. They know all these things. You see, in the instruction to get healing, if you read the scripture, Jesus said to them, you know, you'll be healed. Go and present this to the priest. He didn't say in the scripture, after you present it to the priest, turn around, hey, remember me. Eh? I'm the one who said that word. Eh? I am the one who said that you're going to be healed. Not the priest. I, come back to remember me. But the Bible says, only one that went beyond the instruction. Sometimes we do just nice, eh? just nice, enough. He did. He went to the priest, he presented himself, so he was obedient to the instruction. But what came out later was not so much out of the instruction, was out of his heart. He returned to God because he praised God. He was rejoicing. He was showing his thankfulness. He was showing his emotion. He was showing how grateful he was. He came back and he was rejoicing. He was expressing what was inside. And I think it's very important that whatever we go through, that we learn how to express our thanks to Him. Sometimes it's difficult. You know, I don't know about you, but He comes in a loud voice maybe to warn Jesus, uh, hey, the Samaritan is coming. Because the day that Jesus was living, you know, if you touch someone that is not of the clan, you cannot go into the temple. Right? So what happened is this. Maybe warn him, I'm, you know, praise God, I'm coming. I'm, hey, Jesus. 
As he come closer and come closer, the next thing you know, he was at the feet of God. Interestingly, Jesus' reply was this, huh? Wow, 10 people got cleansed. Eh? How come only one came back? He goes to say this, hey, people that were from the tribe, people that was chosen, they don't know, they don't even give praise to God except for this foreigner, someone that is not in the tribe to know how to worship, to know the protocols, what to do. Basically, he brought every protocol to, lead, to, to be at the feet of Jesus and worship God. I believe that what Jesus was looking for that day was not so much whether you are Jew or not Jew. Jesus was looking for those who were not just looking for the blessing, but will seek the blesser. In other words, people who know how to count their blessings, they receive their blessings, count their blessings, you know, and go back to the source of the bless blessings. These people are always ready to give thanks and rejoice in every situation. Matthew Henry, a great Puritan leader who wrote a commentary on the Old Testament, was once robbed of his wallet. Got robbed on the wallet. After pondering his incident, he wrote these following words in his diary. He says, I thank thee, first because I was never robbed before. Say second, because although they took my purse, they did not take my life. Third, because although they took my all, it was not much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. <laughs> Paul was similar in his view. When he wrote to the Thessalonian church in how to behave, how to go through difficult times. He says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to verse 18, he says, rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We can blame the devil, we can blame Tarakao, we can blame the birds, we can blame anybody. But Paul didn't put there, blame everybody. He says, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you. Huh? God's will, ah, bird in my, tree, in my house. God's will. Ah. Why my kids have to go through that? Why my wife have to suffer physically? Why do I have to have unknown things in my body that even the doctor cannot find out? Why? Why do we have to lose a major loss in all our savings just before Chinese New Year? Why? Give thanks to God in all circumstances. Because this is the will of God. Rejoice. Pray. Give it all back to God. In some countries, we have a special day to celebrate Thanksgiving, right? Not too long ago, maybe some of you have turkey. I tried turkey. Yeah. So buy it before Christmas at Sing Siong. Very good. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But we don't need special event to give thanks to God. Scripture says that we can give thanks to God every day. Every day. Every day. Every moment. Every second. There are many things to give thanks about. Whether you get what you want or you don't get what you want, you still give thanks to God. The third thing I found out from this leper is that thankfulness to God always pays. Always Always. The Bible said that Jesus said to him in verse 19, He said, Rise and go. Your faith hath made you well. I want you to understand that phrase that Jesus was giving to this leper. The phrase, made you well, which is in the NIV, or in the King James Version, it says, make thee whole. It actually comes from one word in the Greek. It's the word sozo. The word sozo Thank you, Jesus. The word sozo is the word commonly used to save someone. To save someone is to preserve and to rescue someone from danger. 
is to save you from, you know, going in a place that will destroy your, your life. And the Bible says this, that God turns to this man and says, rise up and go. Your faith has made you well. Basically, if he was speaking Greek, he would say, you know, stand up, you know, in whatever Greek it is. And he, and, he, and he says, sozo to you, sozo to you. You would understand what it means. It was a complete deliverance from where you are to a place of safety. It was a complete place of preserve and rescue from any harm. My conclusion was this. He already got healed physically. So why did Jesus say those things to, to him? Let me tell you this. If you are thankful to God, always, he will always pay you back much more. As this man came back, not only he was physically have already been healed by God, but I want you to know that very day when he returned to God, as he remembered God and he rejoiced in God's presence, what happened is this, that God gave him more than just physical healing. God saved his life. The word sozo means to save him from death into life. What happened that day? He was not just healed physically, but he was healed in his soul. He was healed in his mind. He was saved into God's kingdom. God offered him salvation. His healing was not something that was skin deep. But, you know, it was more than that. It was soul-saving salvation for him. Thankfulness to God always pays. Always. There's another story in the Bible. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas in the prison. We know that they were locked up in a, in a Roman dungeon. As they were locked up in a Roman dungeon, chained to the wall or to a jailer or to a ball, whatever your view is of that. But it was not a comfortable situation. The Bible says that at midnight, they decided to give God praise. They decided to sing some hymns and some songs unto God to give God all the glory, whatever they were going through. Of course, we know the story. If you don't know, read Acts chapter 16 because of the song that they were singing all night long. Right? What happened was this. God shake the ground. God opened the door. God removed the shackles and God saved people in that place. It was just not the freedom, but it was the freedom of everybody around. Interestingly, the jailer that thought everybody would have left, you know, and wanted to kill his life, became one of the key leaders in that city. Because why? One man decided to give thanks in the middle of a crisis, in the middle of a situation. Let me tell you this, thankfulness to God always pays. Always pays. Freedom came through thanksgiving that night. Gratitude will always lead you to greater miracles in your life. I think that night, the miracle was not just the door opening. The greatest miracle in that jail was the salvation of souls. As I conclude this morning, let me remind all of us to learn how to count our blessings. Maybe one of the most beautiful hymns written about blessings is this song that you might know and those of you who are younger, it's time for you to listen to some old songs. It goes something like this, count your blessings. It says, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord had done. Instead of complaining about your problems, start counting your blessings. Too often people sing, sing songs uh, that would rather say things like count your troubles rather than singing songs that talk about count your blessings. 
I grew up in a generation that sings a lot of sad songs. It's interesting that in the genre of, of my, my daughter, they even, there's even a genre called emo. emo. Because why? People love to talk about the bad things. People love to dwell in the bad things. In my days, we have the four heavenly kings. Not the, you know, you know what I mean. I have a friend, I was just telling my daughter yesterday night, I said, I have a friend over dinner, we're just having conversation, you know. You know, I had, I had this uh, uh, particular friend in class, and this particular friend in class will, will love one of these heavenly kings. He kind of idolized this, trying to find him on Facebook, don't know whether, how to find him. But nevertheless, you know, nevertheless, uh, you know, I remember what he always would do. He would come in front of the, of the, of the class right before, before the teacher comes in, so that transition. He would go in front and he would start dancing, dancing one of these uh, songs. And, what, you know, I remember it was this guy called Aaron Kwok. Huh? Aaron Kwok. You know? You know, and he has the same center parting hair, you know, and he's good with math. That's why in math class, he will sit down and he just comb his hair. You know, they have this comb with the extension, sharp thing, you know, and I just comb his hair, making sure that his hair is clearly center because Aaron Kwok hair, clearly center. So he should dance, you know, and then he will do the any eye, 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 poo eye. Yeah, you know, yeah. I hope we just, every time I think about it, I laugh. But that song is actually as dancey as that song is, if that's a word, right? But actually, it's a sad song. Talk about a person who is broken hearted, you know. Oh, you love me, love me, don't love me, you know, something like that. I don't understand, right? Something. Like that. Then I realized part of the four heavenly kings, you know, one of them was a, a guy called Jackie Chung, right? Jackie Chung. The only thing that I have. Uh, an idea about the four heavenly kings that Andy Lau and me share the same birthday. Say so, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Jackie Chung, and the Jackie Chung has this famous song that all of my people of my generation who listen to Chinese song don't don't ask me why. Okay, yeah, I don't listen to Chinese song. I listen to my friends singing Chinese songs. Okay, <laughs> and they sing songs like Wani <laughs> Wan Pian. Da, 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 da. Sad song, right? But I sing, listen to English songs and uh, don't break my heart. Like, I'm just thinking back before I was a believer. It's so sad that this was my songs that I used to sing. And we know, and we like, oh. if you walk into the mall when these songs are being played again, you remember the girlfriend that broke your heart? <laughs> the boyfriend that that ditch you for your classmate. You remember all these kind of things. And interestingly, it sells. Sadness, you know, sorrow is something that the world can identify with one another. Because whenever things go bad, they go to their song. They go to the jukebox, choose this song, sing the song. Not to help them become better, because help them become worse. Right? Because identify, yes, yes, this singer, really know how I feel. Uh, but let me stop us before we go to our songs. Instead of going to these songs to identify our sorrow, may we go back to God and identify our blessings. This man, remember God. Every season, he remembered God. I don't know what he's been praying for while he wait for his deliverance, but I believe that this guy was different from the other ten. Maybe even before meeting Jesus, he might be, be asking God, be thanking God for every moment. I don't know. I'm just giving you a narrative. Point number two, not only that, but this guy was ready to show his excitement. He was ready to rejoice in God. He was ready to give thanks to God. Even the baby is excited. He was ready. Ready. Always ready. My question to you is this. When you go through your bumps or you, when you go through your mountain experience, are you ready? 
Are you ready? Ready to give God the praise that He deserves in every season of your life. Because if you learn how to do this too, let me tell you this, it will pay dividend. God, thankfulness to God, always pays. I don't know how God pays, whether He heals your soul, whether He saves you, whether He delivers you, even if He doesn't deliver you, He's with you. At the end of the day, let us learn to count our blessings. This morning, I know there's no musician in the house. It doesn't matter. Those of you who are watching in, find a space. I want to give us an opportunity to respond to God. I want to invite you to stand to your feet here in this room and those of you at home, whether you are in your living room, uh, wherever is convenient. Maybe you're watching this at your workplace and you're doing your shift work. I just want to give you an opportunity this morning to stop, to remember God, to rejoice in God, and let God do what He does best. He's the God of breakthrough. He's the God of miracle. He's the God of more than enough. He's a God that does exceedingly, abundantly all that you can hope, imagine, ask for. He's the God that blesses. He's the God that redeems and saves us. I am not afraid to say that God blesses us every day. How He blesses us may not be monetary, but for some of us, we need His blessing because why? We need our minds to be healthy. We need our family to come together. We need our, our soul to be right. We need our body to be made whole. Or maybe for some of us, we need God to bring breakthroughs financially. Whatever it is this morning, I want you to know if we were to open our mouth in the next couple of moments and that we give God all the glory and thanks and remember Him, I believe that God is about to open blessings, not because it's Chinese New Year, because God is who He say He is. Would I ask you to just close your eyes, lift up your hands wherever you are. In this place, in this hour, in this time, I sense in my spirit, maybe you are like me. The 2022 has not been the best start of the year. I don't care, you know, what I'm going through. Not, not that I really don't care, don't care, but I, I, I choose to care about where my focus is, who my anchor is, what I stand on. On. This morning, maybe that's you. Going through a tough time, maybe with your family, maybe it's a relational issue. The last time I preached this sermon in my church, someone's family got breakthrough. Salvation entered the family because they learned to give God praise to. Maybe there was somebody who needs healing in your family. Maybe they are going through cancer. But you never know, as you stand on their behalf, I say, God, I thank you. I remember that you are my healer. I recognize and I rejoice that you are our joy giver. Lord, I recognize and I, if I praise you, God, the life of God will not be stuck, but it will flow down. God, I ask of you, Lord, in Jesus' name, and receive that blessing. As your hands are lifted up, here in this place, even back home, would you give thanks for the next few moments? I want you to open your mouth. The Bible says that he loudly expressed his praise to God. You don't have to sing. The Bible, you, know, you don't need to sing. But I want you to express your thanks to God. I'm giving you a few moments. Wherever you are, just open your mouth whether you're here in this place or back home, would you express your thanks to God this morning? 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shukarabandara makaraba sandara makain. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. 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 Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. And we declare that you deserve all glory, all honor, all praise. We thank you, God, that healing is on its way. Because God, when our eyes are on you, God, when your word says that we put you first above everything else, all things shall be added on. God, we seek your face. Lord, we not seek your hand this morning, but we seek your face. As we seek the blesser, we know we will receive the blessings. We pray for any family that's going through a difficult time, whether they need financial breakthroughs or healing for the body or someone in their family. I speak that in Jesus' name right now. That God, that you are fixing the bone, that you are releasing healing into the cells. God, that you are bringing emotional stability into the mind. Father, we break every power of darkness that has been lurking in seek to seek to destroy families, Lord, in this house. Lord, we pray every division, every word spoken, every curse made, every, a lot, engagement that is unintentional or even intentionally. Lord, we break that in Jesus' name. We cover with the precious blood of Jesus. We pray also for every young person in this room. Lord, we pray that they will not listen to the lie of the enemy. Lord, be in tune to the culture of this world. Father, we pray that God, today, that you will bring a renewal in their mind. Lord, as they remember God, as they learn to rejoice in your presence, God, that they will learn to receive pleasure, not from this world, but pleasure forevermore in your presence, Lord. Father, I ask of you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, that there will be such a change in the atmosphere. Lord, that they will walk out of this place different from the way they come in. Because God, your presence is, there is victory. Where your presence is, there's power. Where their presence is, that you are faithful to fulfill, Lord. So we thank you. We honor you. If you are back home and you've received this, I want you to just take it in. Take it in. Believe God. And I believe that things are about to change. I believe it. I said this in my posting on my Facebook. I still believe. Whatever that comes my way, I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. And that is something that I release, Lord. The spirit of I still believe, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.